So my name is Dr. Ann Collier. I'm an associate professor and chair in the Department of Psychological Sciences and the project director and an artist, actually, as well, in the Hope and Trauma exhibit. Um, I have been making art my whole life. Um, one of the pieces on here is um, in the exhibit today. Um, and I've, I've been making art since I was really little. It's always was important to me and never considered myself an artist. Um, but it wasn't until I was home by choice taking care of uh, three kids. I had three kids within the course of a year. It's somewhat famous for that um, within all the mom groups. Um, they one year and three days apart from twins, uh, my youngest. And it was really difficult because there weren't a lot of things that I could do um, that ever finished. The diapers never finished, the cleaning up never finished. Um, and I started to take my art to a new level during those years. Um, and really discovered within myself, things changed. And my, um, my perspective changed. I felt like I would get a mini vacation. I would feel renewed. Um, so as the years went on, I eventually started thinking about doing this from a scientific perspective and looking at it from a research perspective. So over the last 10 years, that's exactly what I've done, is I've really tried to understand what are the mechanisms that help people when they are making art, when they're viewing art, and how come it helps people, what role does it play. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that today. Um, this exhibit developed because of a relationship that I had um, developed with a student of mine. Um, her name is Devonna Blackhorse. She's actually here tonight in the audience. And um, she was just a student in one of my undergraduate classes, just a student. She was a wonderful student. Um, but she was very quiet and very shy. And she was sat in the back. Um, but she was always raising her hand and always asking questions. And it seemed really clear that as Devana was asking questions, one of the things she wanted me to understand was the impact of intergenerational trauma that's gone on in Native American populations over the years, and the cultural decimation, and what role does that play in mental health and well-being? Um, and it plays a really important role. So we began to talk outside of class about um, that, as well as what impact current traumas have and could have on people. Um, and one trauma that is very important that goes on in this region, particularly of Arizona, is the impact of uranium that's contaminated. Um, and even though it looks like a beautiful land, we all know how gorgeous it is here in Arizona, you wouldn't know the areas in Arizona that have unmarked contaminated mines. You drive by them all the time. And so these red dots actually represent areas um, very close to where we are, including the area of Cameron. So we began to talk about what role does that have and how would that impact people psychologically. And we wanted to help and think about how maybe having people tell us their stories would lead to them doing better psychologically. Um, and so somehow, and that's a story in and of itself, that led to discussion, let's use art therapeutically as a way to help people um, as they're telling their stories, because art therapy can be really helpful. And then it eventually led to the exhibit that we have here today, um, with many steps in between. Um, using art this way is not unusual. It's called social practice art. And the purpose of using art this way is to begin a dialogue with people, um, to have people begin to interact with the issue at hand. And the hope is that you eventually have um, change, social change, because people begin to understand issues, problems, whether it's political, whether it's environmental. One thing that is really, really noticeable in all of this is that as we were talking about doing research, there was a resistance all the time. How is this going to help us? People are always doing research on Native American people. What good is this going to do? And when this evolved into an art project um, to try to bring the story forward with art, everything changed. People were passionate about it, they were excited about it, and they wanted to participate in um, So there's some key elements Excuse me. There's some key elements that I now want to talk about, about how come this art will lead to help you understand things better. What role does it play? And a really critical part of this is something I want to call transcendence in relationship to the art versus having a really negative reaction and rejecting it. 
Um, transcendence is a state that you have when you see something really differently, where maybe you have an awe experience, um, but it changes your perspective on everything, and you don't see things the same way. So my mother-in-law was here in town when, uh, shortly after the exhibit opened, and because she wanted to support me, she came um, and went to go see the exhibit. And she knew it was important to me, um, but I didn't really know how she'd react to it. And as she looked around and came back, she was notably agitated, really upset. She seemed really sad, and it really was disturbing to her. Um, and the next day, when I was asking her about it, she said that she really understood it now, and she really got it, and had a different perspective. That basically, that's exactly what she said. So I would say she experienced this transcendence where before um, there was no, nothing that happened that touched her with this issue, and then afterwards it really changed the way she looked at it. Um, and one ingredient that runs through all of this is compassion. And I would definitely say that was part of her experience when she saw the exhibit, was feeling really compassionate about what, people had, ha what had happened to people. Um, there is definitely research that shows a direct line between transcendence and wellness, whether we're talking about social, emotional, psychological wellness. Um, there is, it definitely leads to people doing better if they have these type of transcendent experiences. So the opposite of transcendence, and I would call this failed transcendence, is negative reaction, where you just reject the idea altogether. And that's definitely something that happened to another friend of mine who came and saw the exhibit. Um, when he saw the exhibit, he walked around really fast. It didn't really seem like it mattered that much to him. And when I asked him about it later, he said, you know, all kinds of people have problems. There's people all over the US that have been exposed to environmental um, toxins and people are unemployed, there's a lot of stressors. And it, it really didn't touch him at all. And what I think is missing in his reaction, why it didn't affect him, is because he didn't have a compassionate response to it. Um, so what you really hope for is that compassion is part of it. So what encourages transcendence? Um, in Whether we're making art, whether we're viewing art, or whether we're part of an exhibit like something like this. And from my research, there are basically four key things that encourage it. Arousal, flow, positive mood, and compassion. So arousal, I don't mean sexual arousal. I mean feeling energized, feeling stimulated, excited. In fact, if you're doing activities that are arousing, it's going to have a benefit on you, regardless of whether it's art. I know from my research with undergraduates, Listening to loud music can be extremely arousing and exciting, and that is something that can be beneficial as well. Um, it, it depends on the individual. But it, it's some level of stimulation where you're really into it. Um, another important component is called flow um, or engagement. And what flow is is where you're completely absorbed in the activity, so absorbed that you forget about time, you don't pay attention to what's going on around you, if you were upset, then you don't think about what you're upset because you're so immersed in what's happening. Um, and as you see on this chart here, there is actually important other ingredients that contribute to flow and arousal, and that's challenge and skill. So if you are really not that challenged to think about anything, or you don't have much skill, and by skill in reference to art, let's think about experience or information or education, you're going to be bored, you're going to be apathetic, and you're not going to be interested. And if you look at the top where it says anxiety, if you have um, no skill in it, no understanding, it might make you really anxious. So you might become really worried about, well, does this mean that uranium is going to be affecting me? I should probably be worried about it. And you're not going to get into the exhibit. It's going to affect you that way. So we need a balance of information as well as the, the way it's presented has to be challenging to people. Um, when I started this research, I thought that positive mood was important. And I would say it is important um, if you are making something or involved in gardening, involved in some type of creative activity, and you feel good about it, you are going to feel even better when you're done. It's going to lead to restoration. It's going to lead you to feel what I call rejuvenated. Um, I like to think of it as a small vacation away from your problems, um, things that might be bothering in your life. 
So that's a very good thing, but it's actually not critical. You can feel like my mother-in-law did. You can feel upset and um, frustrated. Um, if you're doing a DIY do-it-yourself project, you may get really angry while you're doing it because something's going wrong and you have to do different kinds of things and fix it more. But in the end, you will still have this somewhat restor restored state of mind. So the positive mood is good, but it's not essential. Um, and then last, I think this really applies to these types of social um, practice art where we have compassion. Um, if we don't have compassion, I don't think it's going to touch us at a personal level. So compassion is a very important part of this ingredient. So I've been finding, um, I think I said I've been doing this over the last 10 years, but particularly since I've been at NAU over the last six years, that when people make art, it has a really powerful impact on them. It affects them health-wise, mental health-wise. We've even found immune changes associated with making art over a very short period of time and it has emotional benefits for them. Um, but there's lots of research that's been going on on this. And so one of my messages is to you is viewing art is really important, but making art looks like it may even have a bigger impact on you than just um, viewing it, not that, to minimize that in any way. Um, the impact of the art on the viewer, there are lots of research studies that say how important this is, one that just came out involved 2,000 people in the United Kingdom, um, and they followed elderly people during the course of two months um, that were going to museums, they were going to galleries and involved in art. And what they keep finding is really wonderful, that the more people are viewing and engaging with art, um, they have better cognitive functioning, their memory is better, their physical health is better, even to the point that they have better joint mobility. Um, their emotional well-being is better. It leads to social interactions with people. So on many, many levels, it definitely has an impact. And then the impact on the community. So part of what I'm doing, um, so you'll see questionnaires on your way out, is trying to find out directly what impact does this have when you are part of something, learn about something from an art perspective. Um, but we have other studies that show that it has a really important impact on the community because it can lead to change and lead to communication about really important issues um, as well as the social connection. So I would say that in art making, the research is showing that transcendence is the goal. Um, it is really what you want. And compassion is maybe the carrier. It's the ship that you might want to be on in order to get to that transcendent state so that you have a different perspective because of understanding the art. Um, a really important point to me, because art is very important in my life, um, I am not classically trained. And I never was good at drawing. I never was good at painting. But I'm really good with color. And I'm really good with. Um, using textiles and fibers, and that's my medium. It's really important for you to think about what your thing is and not minimize it in any way. I don't like um, classical music, but I love certain kinds of rock music. Other kinds I don't like as much. Maybe it's theater for you. Maybe it's dance. Maybe it's to be a dancer. Um, maybe it's to paint. But again, looking at art is equally important. So it's really important that you don't feel that you have to be confined in a box around the type of art that you are interested in. So you will have this um, impact, the greatest impact will happen if you have something that's challenging, something that's complex. That's actually really important. As I've done my research and asked people about what leads to the, most, the greatest well-being, it's something that is more complicated. Something that's too simple doesn't lead to it. So if you think even in textiles, Knitting is good if it's a simple project, but if you have something that's more complicated that involves you to think about it, then you will have a, it will be better off um, for you. Um, the engagement, the arousal, arousal are also really important. So what essentially started as research, well, science, ended up being an art exhibit. And these are three of the different types of pieces that you'll see here today. Um, the artists really listened to people about a quarter of our artists are either Navajo or Native American. We really try to get as many people as we could involved. Um, but then other people are not, but they also have been touched by 
the impact of uranium and the impact of these issues on them personally. But all of us ended up interpreting it and telling a visual narrative. Um, and so I think that we have accomplished a lot of the same thing we started out to, which was to take stories and narratives and help people find a way to express the impact that it had on their life, whether it's through the artist as a vehicle, as well as um, through people telling their own stories. Um, and through that, there's been a lot of healing. It's been very, very important experience for a lot of the people involved. Um, so just to sum up, I think that narratives um, done, presented in visual ways can lead to engagement, it can lead to enlightenment, understanding information very, very differently. Thank you. <laughs>